I first started DJing, I was about 15, and uh, I was doing pirate radio in, uh, in a town just near London called Kingston, and, uh, and there was a real scene for drum and bass, but the beginning of drum and bass, when it was called Jungle back then, and it was kind of like a, a really new sound back then, and, um, and there was just a really fresh scene, and a bunch of us young guys, and we had our own pirate radio station. I mean, we were the youngest people there was quite a few pirate radio stations, but we were like a young crew, 15, 16 year olds doing it. The other stations kind of had always like an older member on board as well, but we, uh, yeah, we did it ourselves, and we we're really proud of what we did back then. I think Giles Peterson is someone who I've always aspired to looked up to in the sense of what he's done musically with his record label, Talking Loud Records. For me that was a kind of groundbreaking label. Um, and then just as a DJ, he's so versatile, he can play a hip hop set or a house set or whatever it is, but he'll always do it with that kind of Giles Peterson style and it's always kind of fresh and got a nice edge to it. And a couple of years ago, actually last year, I was lucky enough to, uh, to work with him on a project for Defected. I worked for Defected and we did uh, Giles Peterson in the house. So it was basically um, a compilation album that we put together, me and Giles did it together and it was um, him doing one CD more house, the other CD more kind of anything goes, more soul and some disco kind of stuff. And, uh, and yeah, he's just, he's just one of those guys who's just, he, he's left a mark where, you know, his career has just been kind of, you can, you can look at what he's done over the last, 15 years, even more, and you can see that his style has always kind of been there. And Phil Ash is just someone who is a good friend of mine, and he inspired me to start making music. And, and you know, when I first got into house, I was hanging out with him a lot, and I'd go to the studio and just kind of watch him making tunes, and I'd be like, cool, okay, I want to do this. So. <laughs> House music for me, um, God, it means so many different things because I think it's got so many different emotions to it because I used to play more soulful house. That was kind of my thing a few years back and I'd really, you know, be that was the signature sound that I played and that, my old radio show that I used to do for the BBC was more on that kind of vibe. So I think, you know, soulful house is, is more, how can I describe it? I mean, you get a gospel influence, so you've kind of got that side to it. It's very kind of... Um, heartfelt kind of emotional music really then I, you know then now I'm more into the harder stuff as well and I think you get a different kind of emotion from that sound as well I started working with defected a few years back about four years ago and I was um, I was doing a, a, a sub-label that went through Defective called Soul Heaven and this is obviously back when I was doing the more soulful thing and I was a resident for a club night of the same name, Soul Heaven. They decided to set up a label with Defected so we did Soul Heaven Records, we launched that and did some compilations and some singles and, uh, and that was kind of how I was introduced to working with Defected. That was running for a, just over a year and then Soul Heaven and Defected parted ways and I was offered the opportunity at that stage to stay with Defected and, and to make it a bit more of a permanent role because it was a bit more like a freelance thing that I was just doing from home before and then they asked me to come in and you know be based in the office three days a week and they were relaunching Strictly Rhythm because Strictly Rhythm is a uh, you know it's a classic label from the 90s that defined house music and uh, and I think well they had a situation in Strictly Rhythm where to cut a long story short they got into a deal with Warner Brothers and then the deal didn't work out Warner Brothers didn't fulfill their end of the deal. Um, so there was a kind of hiatus where 
Strictly Rhythm wasn't putting out records and uh, I think in that time the whole business changed and when they wanted to come back Strictly Rhythm realised that they didn't have the network to start putting records out again so they kind of looked to Defective and said okay maybe we can do something together and relaunch the label and at that stage I was offered the job to to be part of the relaunch so it's kind of I think it's the relationship between the US and the UK has changed. I think the balance is different now. Before, in the 90s, it was all about the US guys. They were the big producers. They were the big DJs. And I think now it's balanced out a little bit more. I think the European and the UK DJs and producers are also equally big, if not bigger now, than the US. I think in, in, in the US, the scene has struggled over the last few years, I think, a little bit. Wow, three house classics. God, that's one of those questions that I think is, it's, it's not an easy one, you know? There's so many good records, but I think for me, really, there's a record called Still In Love by Melissa Morgan from early 90s. And that was one of the records that first kind of got me into house music. It's a very soulful record. It's a Masters at Work remix. That's probably one of my number one tunes. And then, um, God, what else, man? There's, there, I'm trying to think of something kind of a different vibe as well. Um, I mean, Derek Murray's Strings of Life. There, there's so many, it's kind of hard to, to even pinpoint three. Um, and then, you know, looking at the Strictly Rhythm catalog, because obviously I'm working with the label, I get to know the whole, you know, they released over 600 records, so there's a lot of records there. Um, that from Strictly Rhythm, Barbara Tucker, Beautiful People, that's another kind of classic. For me. <laughs> Um, I think the one bit of advice that I'd give to a DJ who's kind of just getting into the game is to be yourself and to be unique and to not follow what other people do and if you like a certain sound go for it and don't be influenced by other people. Oh, Bali, what can I say? I mean, you know, it's, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, the second time I've been here and Coup d'etat is just, you know, it's, it's renowned now across the world for being the hot spot in Bali. It really is, you know. People, everyone knows it. Everyone's like, oh, Coup d'etat. They all know it straight away. So, um, yeah, so it's just, I'm really happy to be able to DJ here, you know, after hearing so much about the place. And I actually came here last summer when I was here and just came and hung out here. And I was like, wow. And I'd already heard before that about the place and people have been like, got to go to Coup d'etat. It's like a, you know, it's like a destination that everyone wants to go to. So to play here last night, amazing, really, right? Because it, I got to play a different kind of sound because usually I play house. Um, but coming here, it was kind of like, okay, I can go and play anything out of, you know, the more down tempo stuff and a little bit of hip hop and some jazzy stuff, some classics. So to have the opportunity to do that in this kind of surroundings for me was one of the best gigs of my career so far, man. I really enjoyed it. Good stuff, man. Definitely.